Hey y'all, this is Carrie with RenovativeFaith.com and after doing my full cabinet painting tutorial, I decided I wanted to update my backsplash as well. My old backsplash was really dated after painting my cabinets, so I ran across this option. Believe it or not, these are PVC panels and they are paintable. You can cut them with scissors and they are super durable and waterproof. Also, I was able to put them over my existing backsplash, which was super easy and there was no messy demo. You can have them in a rustic red brick look, a whitewash look, I can show you how to do that, or have it in white brick like I have here. And they're so easy to install, I was able to also do this mosaic brick backsplash behind me. So stay posted and I'll show you exactly how to get the same durable, gorgeous finish with these PVC panels as I did here. So here's how the cabinets look before they were painted. And here's how they look after being painted but before adding the new backsplash. So for the solid white backsplash, you'll come in and first of all, I added a primer and I used Zinsser Cover Stain um, so that the paint adheres really well to the polyvinyl material. So what worked well for me was to come in vertically in the grout lines to get those first. And then I painted horizontally to get the rest of the bricks. To get a whitewash look, go to renovatedfaith.com slash brick for backsplash and you'll see those instructions there. Now that the primer is dry, you will add a coat of paint and paint it on in the exact same way you did the primer. Step two is dry fitting the panels on the wall, but before we do that, we want to remove all switch plates and outlet plates. Now, starting from the far left side of your wall, hold the panel in place so it is even with the edges, and also so there's a little bit of room at the bottom for a caulk line, and then mark the edge with a few dashes with a pencil. Now we're going to use our level to draw a level line based on those marks. We wanna have a level line to go off of for all of our panels. Now we're going to dry fit the panels hanging them up with just painter's tape so we can get an idea of where they're going to go on the wall. And this also helps us to know where to cut holes for the switches and outlets. 
So now that you've marked the approximate location of the switches by feeling underneath the dry fitted panels, you can cut away any portions of the panels that you need to to expose those switches or outlets. This part takes some trial and error. Now that I've cut off a section for this outlet, I am going to mark where I need to continue to cut to make a hole for the rest of the outlet. Now you will glue the panels to the existing tile using liquid nails, but be sure to check out the blog post that tells you the exact formula of liquid nails to use. And what worked well for me was applying the liquid nails over the grout lines to make sure that they adhere well to my old tile. You can see that I'm applying extra to the end pieces and also the top and bottom edges. Now line the glued panels on the wall and push them up against the level line that you used before. And be sure to apply enough pressure so that uh, all the portions of the panels adhere to the old backsplash. After putting up each panel, I put some bags of, I happen to use Epsom salts, but you could use bags of sugar or flour or anything you have around the house, just to kind of keep them from sliding down the wall. You can see where I've cut smaller single pieces of brick and filled in where the old brick was exposed. And now I'm showing you where I'm going to come back and caulk in between the main panels. So we're just going to caulk in between the edges of where the larger panels meet up and also on the edges of any smaller pieces that we added. We want to cover up those edges and that caulk is going to look just like the rest of the grout of our brick. So right now I'm putting uh, a line of caulk between each edge and it's messy and that's okay. We're going to smooth it out. Be sure to have some type of trash can and a wet paper towel or a baby wipe with you during this point because you're going to want to wet your finger each time you go to smooth it out. And I recommend using your index finger, wet it, and then smooth out perpendicular to that edge. And each time you smooth out, wipe that excess caulk off onto your paper towel. And when you're done with your paper towel or baby wipe, put it in the trash can. If you leave them around, you'll get caulk on everything. Ask me how I know. And you can use them to wipe up any little mistakes.
And here you can go back and fix any areas where you didn't get great coverage. And again, just wet your index finger and smooth it out like you did before. And you'll do this exact thing to every edge where you had to cut. We won't have to do this to every single grout line, just where we had to cut in between our panels or panel pieces. You'll also want to be sure to check the blog post to see how I did the mosaic over my stove. When you're done caulking, let it dry overnight, and then you're going to paint on one final coat, uh, making sure to cover all the caulk lines. And here's the final reveal.